saved in my memory. Mm -hmm. That's the Loristinus bush out there in the corner of the garden oh. that I left for that very reason. Uh, yeah. In the so that was uh, Church of England, around no, there. Baptist. Baptist. Mm -hmm. All right. So it'll be Baptist Wowsers then. Yeah. Well, we were every Sunday we'd have to march to church. The, all the kids would be lined up, and we'd march into Mor into Norton Summit to the Baptist Church. And I remember one day a woman was a young woman was inducted into whatever classification she the church you know, had, but she was baptised and she was in a white shift of some sort. And uh, they opened up a trap door on the stage. Mm -hmm. And underneath is a, a thing of water, like a small swimming pool, and she was dunked in that and then brought up, and all her sins were washed away, and she was then sure. uh, baptised. I remember that clearly. But we were regimented, we were marched to school, and uh, one of the things that. <laughs> oh, pardon me. We had to pass a piggery on the way, <coughs> and we were always given um, sandwiches of bread and uh, lard or uh, dripping, dripping, bread and dripping, and sometimes you get bread and jam, and that was our lunch. But of course, the kids were, were pretty bloody sick of bread and dripping. So as they passed the piggery, they chucked their lunches in so that the authorities got wind of that and then the lunches were brought to the school and handed out at a later date. So what would they do for lunch if they had no lunch when they got to school? Then? Oh, they'd probably get some off the other kids, the Norton Summit children. Mm -hmm. We were called the Maury boys, Maury boys and girls. And uh, it... it uh, it was quite an interesting little school, a country school, but there was an apple orchard right up the, 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 near the back of the school, and we used to sneak in there and pinch apples. And I remember once with another kid and I got one apple and he had a knife, and I said, well, cut it in two, and I held the, the apple like that, and he went, shump, and cut that finger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I still got the scar. And... Uh, that's, that's how we survived. We lived, you know, on our wits. So would the Maori, Maori boys clang together and, and be rivals with their others in the school, or did oh, you have friends outside the orphanage group? There was a bit of a division, but I, I can't recall that there was any great, um, in, you know, there was not, not open hostility between mm. the two groups. We were just envious of how the kids, because they bought nice lunches. Mm and often with fruit and particularly during the season because Cherryville wasn't very far from North Summit and that's where they obviously grew cherries and in the season they were delicious mm. of course fresh cherries um, Did so you? at the orphanage itself with these other kids these the secret five we'd sneak up to the there's an orchard at the end of the drive mm -hmm. uh, we'd sneak in and get under the fence and go in and pinch oranges and uh, we had a motor tyre, we'd put the oranges in the motor tyre and to avoid detection we'd bowl the motor tyre down the drive and down to the Loristinus uh, hedge and we'd hide there and eat the oranges but of course the orange grower wasn't very happy about us pinching his oranges and we got into trouble over that and uh, what else can I remember? We had well, do you remember the names of any of the kids in the Secret Five? I don't. Not a no. Christian name or a nickname? No, no I can't. Jesus. Were there... That's over 80 odd years ago. Were there any school... Did you have a school buddy or a room buddy that was a mate ever in that you can think of? No. One of the kids was called Cyril, but that, that's just the, the name sticks out in my mind. I think he was the boy that was being wanked by the younger mm. boys. Um, no, I can't. And it's interesting, I often thought of writing to the Adelaide newspaper, mm. putting a little ad in, 
asking are there any Maori boys or mm. Maori girls from that era. Mm. So that era would have been 1929, 1930. It would be about 1930. Mm. No, hang on. 31, I'd be 5, so it'd be 31 to 36. But they were all three or four years older than you, so they'd all be late oh, yeah. 80s at yeah. least if they're alive at yeah, the catch. Right. Mm. Mm. I remember one kid saying that his father was a gold miner, he had a little gold mine, and his job was to sit up the top of the gold mine with a mirror and reflect the sunlight down. To the bloke's working? Yeah, to the bloke working down below, so he could see what he was doing. Uh, that's just one thing that sticks in my mind. We all, the other thing, of course, there was, uh, there was a big uh, septic tank and the effluent from that flowed downhill and we were given little plots of land in this region where the effluent flew, flowed down and we were supposed to grow vegetables to feed us all mm. and uh, I, my efforts were pretty pathetic if I can remember rightly uh, but whatever we grew a lot of it went to the staff and we got bugger all we, we, we were given uh, crushed wheat porridge for breakfast mm -hmm. and one slab of bread with dripping on it. That was our breakfast. Um, and that was day in, day out. Mavis the cunning bitch uh, had made a, a deal with one of the um, milking boys that when she gave him a, ki a kiss or a look up at knickers or what um, and he used to leave her a jar of cream hidden behind one of the curtains to put on the, the uh, porridge. We all got skim milk. Mm. It was, uh, but she got bloody cream. Cunning bitch. Gee, that's 80.